Hello friends, so in this video, we'll talk about knowledge distillation as was proposed in the paper Distilling the Knowledge in a Neural Network by Jeffrey Hinton. So distillation as a process involves heating a liquid in a retort and the vapors that are produced are then passed through a condenser which gives us the distillate which is a much more purer form of the contents that were present in this liquid. So therefore, Jeffrey Hinton went and named this process knowledge distillation because here also we have got a deep neural network which has got a lot of knowledge and we want to condense its knowledge and then pass it on to a smaller neural network. The deep neural network in the knowledge distillation paradigm is called the teacher network whereas the smaller is called the student network. So there were two main concepts that were introduced in this paper. The first one being the concept of soft labels. So here we have a deep neural network which we call the teacher network which has been pre-trained on a specific data set. So after its pre-training has been completed, if we take any image from the data set, let us say the image is that of a truck and we pass it through this neural network, we would get some final layer logit values that would be generated here. And when we pass these final layer logits through the softmax activation function, we would get some probability distribution which is known as the soft labels. Now associated with this image in the data set, we already have its hard labels. If we compare the information content of the hard labels vis-a-vis -vis the soft labels, what do we see? So the hard labels are telling us that this image is that of a truck. It tells us that it is not a car and it is not a carrot. There is no information about the interclass similarity of this image that is that of a truck with all the other classes in the data set. Whereas in contrast, if you look at the soft labels, apart from telling us that which is the actual label associated with this image, which is given by the dominant probability, it is also telling us that there is a 30% probability that this image looks like that of a car because both have wheels and both have a similar structure as that of a vehicle. But it also tells us that there is only a 1% probability that this image looks like that of a carrot. So therefore, apart from telling us which is the actual label, it is also giving us the interclass similarity. Therefore, to summarize, the soft labels carry richer information of the interclass similarity besides the information of the correct label. So the next concept that was introduced in the paper was softmax with temperature. What we see in front of us is a normal softmax equation which takes in the final layer logits and this when passed through the softmax function would give us the relative probabilities. But what was used in the paper was softmax with temperature where we can see that the essential difference is that the final layer logits have been divided by T which is a hyperparameter which stands for temperature. Now what is the effect of this temperature on the output relative probabilities and its subsequent effect on the computation of the loss is what we'll see in a Jupyter notebook. So in this Jupyter notebook, let us first look at what would be the effect of the temperature on the output probability distributions. So in this first cell, we are just importing some libraries that we would require like NumPy and matplotlib. And in the subsequent cell, initially we define what would be the final layer logits and we are storing that in a NumPy array and we have taken some example values for the experiment. Then we have a list of temperatures and initially we take only T is equal to 1 because we want to compute only the normal softmax. And we also take a list of all the classes that we would have. Since we have 4 classes, we have got class 1 to class 4 here. Then we loop through the list of the temperature and compute the relative probabilities which is nothing but the output of the final layer logits being passed to the softmax with temperature. Then we plot on the x-axis the classes that we have and on the y-axis the relative probabilities. We also truncate the relative probabilities to two decimal places because this would make it easier for us to understand when we finally print it out here. And finally we have some code that makes our plot look better. Let me now run this cell. And this is the output that we get. Here we can see that we got the probability distribution corresponding to t is equal to 1. And the same probability distribution has been plotted on this graph here. Okay, in the next cell, the only addition is that we have added another temperature value that is T is equal to 1.5. That is, we have increased the temperature. Let me now run this cell and let us see what the output is. So here is the output and we see that we got the probability distribution corresponding to T is equal to 
and the same has been plotted on the orange line here and what we observe is that the dominant probability has gotten suppressed whereas the lesser probabilities have gotten enhanced. So in the next cell we add another temperature T is equal to 2. Let me run this cell and this is the output that we get and we can see that the trend is continuing. For T is equal to 2 represented by this green line here the same trend is continuing. Okay, so in the next cell we take another T value T is equal to 2.5 and add it to that list and run the cell and this is the output that we get and we see that the trend is continuing. Similarly for T is equal to 3 we add it to that list, run the cell and see the trend continuing and finally T is equal to 7. When we add it to that list, run the cell, we see that the trend continued. So finally what we can conclude is that as we go on increasing this temperature, it results in an overall softening effect on the output probability distribution. That is the dominant probability got more and more suppressed whereas the lesser probabilities got more and more enhanced. And let us now see what would be the effect of this temperature on the loss function. So here for a loss function, I have taken KL divergence, which basically takes the difference between two probability distributions that would be passed as input to this function. And uh, so let me just run this cell first. Okay. And in this cell here, what we have done is we have first taken two distributions called A and B, which correspond to a case when temperature T is equal to one. And then we are computing its KL divergence. And then again, we take two more distributions, soft A, soft B, which correspond to the case when temperature T is equal to 2, and then compute its scale divergence. Let me run this cell, and let's see what the, is the output that we get. So this is the output that we get. For temperature T is equal to 1, we got 1.12 approximately. And for temperature T is equal to 2, we got 0 0.29. So what we can conclude is, as we go on increasing the temperature, it results in a softening effect on the output probability distribution, and it also affects in lowering of the loss value. This would then result in lesser amount of gradients or lesser magnitude of gradients backflowing. What effect this all has on the overall knowledge distillation process is what we'll see in the subsequent slide. So now we have reached a stage where we can understand knowledge distillation in its entirety using the two concepts that we saw, that is soft labels and soft max with temperature. What we have in front of us is the deep cumbersome neural network called the teacher network which has been pre-trained on a specific data set. Down below we have the smaller student network which wants to learn from this teacher network. So in the training procedure of the student, images from the training data set would be taken. They would be passed through the pre-trained teacher to generate some final layer logit values here which would be passed through a softmax with temperature to generate the soft labels. The same image would be passed through the student network. It would generate some final layer logit values here and these values would be passed through the softmax with temperature again to generate the soft predictions. We now have two probability distributions and we can compute the distance or loss between the two which would be called as the distillation loss. And the loss function could be anything like a cross entropy or a KL divergence that is any loss metric that computes the distance between two probability distributions. The soft labels here are this term whereas the soft predictions are this term. Now previously we had seen that increasing the temperature hyperparameter results in lowering of the loss which would subsequently result in lesser gradient backflowing. So this temperature is a hyperparameter that the user has to find such that the student is able to learn properly that is it is able to converge and the training procedure or the training process is stable. Now the distillation loss is just one part of the entire knowledge distillation process. The second part involves taking these final layer logit values and then passing it through a normal softmax to generate the hard predictions. And with this image, we already have known its hard labels. So now we can compute a loss between the two, which would be known as the student loss. So here, this again can be anything like a KL divergence or cross entropy or any other loss metric. And Y true here is the hard labels and PS is the hard predictions. So finally, the entire knowledge distillation loss for the student would be a weighted combination of the student loss and the distillation loss. So Hinton also carried out certain experiments on the MNIST dataset and these were the results. 
For the teacher network, they took a deep neural network having two hidden layers, having a total of 1200 rectified linear units. This network gave 67 absolute errors on the MNIST dataset. For the student network, they took a similar architecture having two hidden layers but having only 800 rectified linear units. And this network without the knowledge distillation process gave 146 absolute errors. And the student network with the knowledge distillation process gave 74 absolute errors. Therefore, they were able to validate that their method is working. So this was knowledge distillation. And in the next video, we'll talk about fitness.